Okay. So now that we've talked about the syllabus, let's briefly uh, get introduced back into the world of fluid dynamics and specifically aerodynamics of aircraft. So we just discussed the syllabus. Here again is the Clue website if you, uh, for some reason, have not already gotten on that. So this course is going to work by me posting class preparation, preparation materials to Clue as well as Electro Tools. And here's the link for the Electro Tools page for the site. And these will include things like lecture and demonstration videos, reading assignments, um, both from the textbook and online. So those are um, mostly already in, in the syllabus, um, and any other web links that may be of interest. And in class, I'll briefly summarize the prepared material, and then we're going to do a lot of interactive conceptual problems. I also may do some examples. The tutorials will be used for further working example problems, as well as answering your questions about the homework. So what you need to do is read and watch the online material and the assigned textbook reading before class. And then come ready to participate in discussions, problem solving, and questions and answer sessions. For those of you who haven't done it before, um, you'll need to get set up with a lecture tools account. And this is something um, that I'll demonstrate uh, at the end of today's lecture. So lecture tools, um, the videos and of the lectures will also be posted there. In addition to that, we'll use them for the in-class activities uh, that are interactive. So once you're set up, you can either use the website to respond to questions or even uh, participate using text messaging. All right, so enough about how the course is going to work. What is this course about? Well, in this course, we're going to deal with fixed wing heavier than air flight. So uh, we're not really going to get into helicopters or airships or anything like that. It's basically going to be airplanes. So how does an airplane work? Well, air flows over the wings, and this generates lift which counteracts the weight due to gravity and accelerations due to maneuvers such as turns. Any object moving through a real fluid, here the fluid is air, experiences a resistance force called drag, and that tends to slow the aircraft down. This is mainly from friction, but not entirely, depending on the specific uh, flight speed. To overcome that drag and maintain the flight speed and altitude, you need to generate thrust using the aircraft propulsion system. And this can be propeller or jet engine. Um, and in this course, we're not going to get into any details of propulsion systems. They were covered at a high level in the introductory uh, fundamentals course, and you'll be taking in the summer a aero propulsion course where you'll go into a lot more detail on propulsion systems. So takeaways that you should get from this course are the physical mechanisms by which lift and drag are generated for airfoils and wings, and the manner in which those are affected by compressibility, along with ways that you can quantitatively approximate those compressibility effects. You'll also gain the knowledge of multiple tools, um, some analytical, some numerical, for computing lift and drag, as well as an appreciation for the limitations of those tools, when you can use them and when they're not going to give you good results. Finally, you're going to gain the ability to assess the stability of a given aircraft configuration. First, let's go back to basics and think about basic fluid mechanic analysis. So there's two fundamental ways to model fluids. You can think about control volumes or about fluid elements. So for the control volume approach, basically you draw a box around the system of interest. And now you don't need to know anything about what's happening inside the box. You're only concerned with the forces on the surface and the fluxes entering and leaving. 
or you can use the infinitesimal fluid element approach where you shrink that control volume down until essentially it only occupies a single point in space. And so this is very useful when working with the differential forms of the governing equations. So neither of these is better than the other. Um, they each have their place and knowing which one to use in a given problem is a very important skill to develop. In either case, you're going to be using conservation laws with these analysis methods. So the two most fundamental are mass and momentum. So mass is conserved in steady flow, which is always going to be the case in this course. Mass flow into a control volume or a point in space must equal the mass flow out. And then as far as momentum is concerned, what this just says is that the net force that acts on a control volume or fluid element is given by the difference in momentum flux entering and leaving the control volume or that fluid element. Another important tool is Bernoulli's equation. Now under the following conditions you can use it. The flow must be incompressible, inviscid, and steady. And then if all those are true, what Bernoulli's equation tells us is that the stagnation pressure is constant along a streamline. And so we can write, if there's no gravitational effects, which we don't care about for aerodynamics, that PT, the stagnation pressure, is a constant and is equal to the pressure plus something called the dynamic pressure, which is one half times the density rho times the velocity v squared. Further, if the flow is irrotational, which means that the flow has no vorticity, we can also say that the stagnation pressure is constant across streamlines, and Bernoulli's equation can be used between any two points in the flow, not only along a given streamline. Another key thing that you've learned in the past about fluid mechanics that I never want you to forget is that fundamentally, it's a non-dimensional topic. So the Reynolds number, the Mach number, force and moment coefficients, these are what govern the behavior of fluids, not things like the velocity or the pressure, because these quantities are not arbitrary inventions, but they fall out of the governing equations when they're analyzed in the proper way. So remember the Reynolds number is a inertial force over viscous force ratio. The Mach number is essentially a velocity fraction relative to the speed of sound. Lift, drag, and moment coefficients are non-dimensionalized versions of these forces and moments which act on an aerodynamic body, uh, which take into account their size and the dynamic pressure of the incoming fluid. Another useful non-dimensional parameter that we can use to describe, especially the distribution of pressure on an aerodynamic body, is the pressure coefficient, um, Cp. And so here's the definition. It's the pressure minus the free stream pressure. When we use the subscript infinity, that always is going to mean the free stream conditions, so far away from any aerodynamic body of interest. And again, we're normalizing here by the dynamic pressure in that free stream. Now in incompressible flow, you can considerably simplify this as it turns out it's all just a function of the velocity and it's just one minus the square of the of the infinity. Finally, the concepts of path lines, streamlines, and streak lines are important. A path line is just a locus of points through which a fluid element is passed. A streamline is a curve that's everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. And a streak line is the locus of fluid elements which have passed through a specified point. Now, again, in this course, we're only interested in steady flow. And the great news is that in steady flow, all of these are exactly the same thing. And typically, we'll talk about streamlines. So in summary, this course is going to focus on aircraft lift and drag, how they're generated, and how to calculate them 
using analytical and numerical tools. We're also going to see how we can analyze aerodynamic forces to assess the stability of an aircraft. And we're going to use some basic fluid mechanics tools extensively in this course. Differential analysis, control volume analysis, conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, Bernoulli's equation, and dimensional analysis. So what's next? Well, on Thursday, please come to class. Um, there'll be in-class concept questions and activities that are based on the topics that were discussed in this short lecture. And for the tutorial, um, there'll be some problems given out which you'll hand in, though they won't be graded. Um, this is just to help you review these same basic fluid mechanics concepts. Before next class on Tuesday, watch the online lectures and read the assigned online and textbook material for uh, review of potential flows and incompressible flows over 2D airfoils. And then finally, but most importantly perhaps, come to class ready to actively think, participate, and learn. I know in a lot of courses, not a lot of learning happens while you are in class. I refuse to, to have that be the situation in this course. I want you to do a lot of active learning while you're in the classroom with me in front of you.